Okay. So, this is an interview with Corporal William Hart. Mr. Hart was born on September 14, 1924 in Wilsey, Kansas. Mr. Hart served from April 15, 1943 to April 9, 1946 in France. Uh, Miss, um, Miss, Mr. Hart achieved the rank of Corporal upon leaving the military service. This interview is being done uh, November 23, 2013 in Gilroy, California. This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress as part of the Da Vinci High School America's at War Project. So, um, where, we already covered this, but um, you were born in Wilsey, Kansas. Yes. Uh, what was it like growing up? Wilsey? Yeah. In Wilsey was a, a little town of about 300 people on the railroad and when I grew up. Uh, my father uh, ran a lumber yard and a uh, hardware store for someone else. And um, the railroad brought in the salesmen and everything. And then when I was about five, we moved out on the farm. And my father continued to work um, in, the, in town, but we also had the farm. And then finally, in the late 30s, he went out and became a farmer, full-time farmer. So I was a farm boy, basically. I grew up on the farm. Uh, about a mile out of that town. Did you have any siblings growing up? I, I was the only child. And you didn't, did you have any family in the military service? Uh, part, uh, not that, well I had family, yes, but not direct. Uh, mm -hmm. My cousins, I had a bunch of my cousins. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so you were, you enlisted, correct? I, I volunteered for induction, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when was that? Uh, April the 15th, 1943. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, why did you choose uh, the specific branch of service that you went into? Uh, I was a student at, the at Kansas State, which is now Kansas State University. And um, I was working my way through college. And the... Army had a program for cadets there, and so forth, and, the, and uh, there was a bulletin that said if you were in by a certain date, you could uh, uh, get into the meteorology in the Air Corps. And I thought that would be nice. So, I, I, because basically I would still be taking the same kind of courses I was taking, only I wouldn't have to work my way, the Army would pay for it. So I, I joined because I wanted to go into the meteorology in the Air Corps. Mm -hmm. um, what was a training camp like? What were those early my, my days first, like? Uh, I was the biggest misfit of World War II. I was in five different outfits. Uh, I started out at Shepherd Field, Texas, and uh, took basic training there in the Air Corps. And they closed the meteorology program. So they said, you're going to be a radio operator and gunner. And I said, I don't want to be a radio operator and gunner. I was interviewed for the Army Specialized Training Program, which was uh, created by uh, General Marshall to have educated officers. And I was uh, selected to go to the University of Missouri. I went there for two quarters until they, until they Congress decided they could not have that program. <laughs> going on in the middle of the war, and they abolished it. So they put me from there in the infantry, the 66th Infantry Division. This was a division that was created just for the war and abolished after the war, so it has no history. You can find it on the internet, 66th Infantry Division. Uh, so I was put, I took uh, basic training in the infantry. Company L, 262nd Infantry. Uh, I decided a man, a man might get killed in that outfit. And through my own efforts, I managed to get over into the artillery. And I not only got into the artillery, but I was in Division Artillery Headquarters Battery as a surveyor, which is what I had done at the University of Missouri. Uh, and that's what I did during combat. Mm -hmm. Then after combat, it was in France. Uh, I don't know why, but they made me a chauffeur for the Division Artillery General. I drove him until the division broke up. He went back to America, and they sent me to Vienna, Austria, and the 250th Combat Engineers. 
So I was in five different uh, units in three years. Wow. Um, so when you went at, oop, uh, what was it like adapting to military life? Did you have any problems with oh, that? Oh, yes. Was there I, any I'm notable? A, a only child. Mm -hmm. I make up my own mind. I don't need people to tell me when to get up and eat and inhale and exhale. I did not like the military. So I was anxious to get out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you went abroad, had you ever uh, gone abroad before? Uh, when you what? Went abroad when you went to like France? Have you ever left the country or anything before? before Not that? before that, no. So that was the first time you had gone uh, yeah. abroad before? What was that like? Was there any like... Well, we went to England, where most people went, and uh, then the, the bulge hit. That was the Germans' final offensive of the war. And we were in England, and they decided we should immediately go to the bulge in Europe. So they pulled our infantry out in a, with hardly any notice. And they were, they were torpedoed in the English Channel on Christmas Eve, 1944, and lost almost 800 people. And because of that, they sent us to where the Germans were at the submarine pens over in Lorient and Saint Nazaire in France, and uh, the 94th Division was there at that time. We took their place, and they went to the boat. Because uh, this was the second worst troop ship disaster of World War II. Lots of people died that should not have because there was a lot of blame to go around in all directions. The military never wanted to talk about it, and I think it was hushed up for about 20 years. Um, so what kind of action did you witness? Well, we were in an area where there was a lot of patrol action and a lot of uh, uh, artillery action. My, my job was to say, if you're going to point a gun somebody seven miles away, you have to know where you are and where they are. That was my job. I was uh, in a survey section, which has, we do the calculations and so forth, and determine coordinates of the, of the, uh, where the firing batteries, where the firing batteries then determine the coordinates of their target. Mm -hmm. What did, what did, what was that process like calculating that? Did you have any sort of, you, they didn't have computers back then, so. No, it was all uh, manually mm -hmm. done. All the calculations were manual. Uh, I knew how to do that. That wasn't the reason. I was, I was over there. I wasn't allowed to do that, although I was capable of doing mm -hmm. it. What was that process okay. like, calculating it manually? It was pretty simple. You had mm -hmm. a book that had uh, coordinates. I mean, yeah, uh, you, you have azimuth differences, and you calculate the uh, latitude and the departure mm -hmm. uh, so you could get the coordinates from any place. And it was the, you just look at a table and add these things up. Mm -hmm. Somebody had done all that work. Yeah. That gave you a distance and an asthma. Was there... You get a coordinate that way. Mm -hmm. Was there any, like... Uh, were there any... Were the... Were the bleh, I'm sorry. Were there instances of, like, human error ever involved? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, was that a frequent... I, well, I didn't experience any of that particularly, mm -hmm. but there was human error in... In that torpedoing of the ship and the crew taking the boats and leaving the people on there and nobody helping them from that was a lot of human error. Mm -hmm. The ship went down and they went down with it, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they weren't anyone there to rescue them. It was uh, Christmas Eve, it was cold in the North Atlantic. <laughs> All right. Uh, how did you feel about the combat, witnessing the destruction, anything like that? I felt like pretty good doing what I was doing. That was my job, and I did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, did you form any friendships during your service? Were there any notable instances of camaraderie among you and your group? Of course, you fur furnish certain ones. I, we, I belong to an organization called the Panther Veterans Organization, and we meet every two years at some place. In fact, we met last year in Nashville, Tennessee. And we're going to uh, uh, New Orleans next 
you. Mm -hmm. So I've formed a friendship with a lot of those people. Uh, I formed friendship with people that were in my unit, well, even though they were officers and we were all, after the war, we were all civilians, we were all equal. Mm -hmm. So we used to come and visit, they'd come and visit me, I'd go to their home mm -hmm. in different states. One of them lived in Colorado, one lived in Alabama, but they were all over. Mm -hmm. How did those friendships form during the war? Was it just like... They didn't particularly during the war. Not during the war? It was after the war? Yeah. It was after yeah. the war? Did you have any friendships formed during the war, or was it all after? Well, yeah, of course I always had friends. I always yeah. had a buddy of some kind. Mm -hmm. uh, during combat, I was in a wooded area in a dugout, and there was two of us there. And uh, the other, there was about eight in this. Uh, surveying section of the uh, Division Artillery Headquarters. Uh, and so we all lived in close proximity to each other and we all worked together. Mm -hmm. And so some of them were had different values in mind. I became more friendly with them after the war than I did during the war. Why do you think that is? Well, I had higher standards than some of them do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you define higher standards or? Yeah. You go, you go on leave, are you going to a brothel or aren't you going to a brothel? Uh, I was uh, I was married while I was in the service at, in the infantry at uh, Camp Rucker, Alabama. Mm -hmm. I met my wife at the University of, of Missouri and I uh, married her at Camp Rucker, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And next June we'll be married 70 years, we're still oh. together. And so that I would not have met her had it not been for the war. Mm -hmm. I'm from Kansas and she's from Illinois and we, I met her in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Married her in Alabama. My first two children were born in Colorado. Mm -hmm. okay. um, did you stay in touch with friends and family back home at all during the war? Oh, I've outlived most of them. Well, during the war. Oh, sure. I used to write emails. They had, uh, they call them victory letters. They were, you write them and they would take pictures and, and microfilm them and send them back and forth. Hmm. Matter of fact, I have one that I sent to my uncle and his daughter decided to return it to me a few mm -hmm. years ago. So it's one I wrote. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, did you do anything for recreation, any hobbies during your time off duty? Well, we listened to the radio. We, uh, went in Vienna, we went to the opera, we went oh, to the yeah. movies, uh, we played bingo, we, we did whatever, and I learned photography. Oh, really? And I became, uh, yeah, my buddy was, one of my buddies, mm -hmm. was the, became the photographer for the uh, combat engineer, so mm -hmm. I was, had access to the dark room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I learned, I got into photography through that. That's cool. What did, what, you just took pictures of scenery, or? I, I guess I took pictures of about anything, people or, mm -hmm. people or scenery, yeah. yeah, during the war and after the war. Mm -hmm. I still do. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what kind of operas and things did you see in Vienna? Well, Die Fledermaus was one of them, mm -hmm. I remember, I went to. Uh, the Viet Vietnamese, or the, not the Vietnamese, the, Viet the Viennese mm -hmm. are quite the opera lovers. and. Uh, we were able to get tickets and, and mm -hmm. go. Even during occupation? Of course, I couldn't understand their language, but I could understand what was happening. Mm -hmm. Even during the occupation, they still had? That was during the occupation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we went to, uh, during as soon as combat was over, mm -hmm. they sent us to Germany. We were only there about five days. They changed our orders. We went down to Marseille, and we sent people, we processed people uh, to going to Japan, and uh, when then they broke up the division, and other people came in who, they had a point system. They went home, and we went to Vienna, mm -hmm. or we went to Austria, but I happened to be in Vienna. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now we're going to get into, uh, where were you when the war ended, like it was specifically? Was I was in combat, yeah. <laughs> At, in France, northern mm -hmm. France. Like, Orient, near, near, well, yeah, near Orient. Mm -hmm. Like the moment you heard 
when it was well, over. We had a big celebration. We mm -hmm. all got drunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and then after uh, the war ended, you were in Vienna during its occupation. What, what does that process look like? What or, process? What do you mean, process? Like, uh, I guess the question... How did we get there and back? Well, the process, I guess, um, what's it like being in an occupied area after the war? Is it like oh, martial it law? Fine. <laughs> yeah. We lived... Uh, to get there, we, we traveled what they call a 40 and 8, which is a boxcar made to haul animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we moved whenever we went someplace. And when we left and went to come back home, we also took the same kind of a train. Mm -hmm. uh, once we got there, then we were assigned to a headquarters that might happen to be in the central part of uh, Vienna. And I was in a big compound with all, all American uh, soldiers or civilians that we had hired to work for us. Mm -hmm. I, ha I happened to be a clerk at that time, and I had a woman who did my typing. Mm -hmm. So was was there like martial law for? Yes, uh, there the, uh, the there because the Vienna was a, an international zone. We had passes that were in uh, uh, Russian, French, and English, mm -hmm. and the MPs. There was one from England, one from America, one from France, and one from uh, uh, Russia. They all write it down together, so. The passes were in four languages, or three languages, so that they could understand what, who we were. We mm -hmm. always had to carry those. Yeah. I still have it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, was there any memorable things during, uh... Vienna? Yeah, your time in Vienna. No. Ooh, I went to the know. zoo. I went, I did whatever I could do. I like to say, really? I went to the opera, and uh -huh. zoo, and, and think everything that I could do. So it was pretty low-key. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then... Um, I was a clerk, and that, a that clerk. time I was taking, uh, mm -hmm. making reports on automobiles. Uh, what, just on, on... On how many were over here, and how many were over there, and mm -hmm. what we were doing. Yeah. That uh, was my job. Did you receive any medals or special service awards? Not really. I received a good conduct medal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and they made me finally made me PFC because I was had been in the military 21 months and I was overseas and I hadn't been in jail yet. So they gave me a PFC, and then from PFC I got the T Tech Five mm -hmm. when I started driving the general. But during combat I was in and I was the PFC. Mm -hmm. That's a private first class mm -hmm. they call. Yeah. A division had about 15,000 people. It was uh, made up of three regiments of infantry, uh, and the one I had transferred out of was suffered severe casualties. Mm -hmm. And so I was, the only reason I was not there on that ship was because I was over in the artillery. We came a few days later on a different kind of a ship. Yeah. We had so much equipment. We had to, we came in an LST, they came in a regular ship. So you mentioned uh, you chauffeured for the general. What was that like? That was great. He, he treated me very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, we went down to the Riviera three times. He let me have the car at night. He took me through the Palace of Hope in Avignon. He took me through a perfume factory, and he and I drove down to the Italian border and back and stopped and looked down at Monaco. And so, yeah, he was fine. He, he, was, he treated me very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was the process like returning home after uh, Vienna? Well. They had a point system, mm -hmm. so everybody would have to have points. If you were in the Air Corps and they bombed three different countries, you got five points for each one of those, even though you might be a mechanic and never went left the one place. But in the infantry, you had to be in three different battles to get the same number of points. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for us to have many, many points. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why it took us quite a while to come home. When we did, we came <clears throat> again on a 40 and 8, stayed in Bihar, and took a, a ship home. Mm -hmm. And from there, as soon as we arrived there, we went back to Fort Leavenworth where I was inducted. And I was, re I was re uh, 
I was discharged from Port Eleven Bush mm -hmm. County. Uh, how were you received by your family and your community? Was it positive? Oh yeah, but, well, my mother didn't like it, of course, that I was in the military. I might get killed out, out there. Mm -hmm. But I, I kept myself in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, did you need to readjust to civilian life at all? I didn't have any problem. As soon as I got out, I went back to college. Mm -hmm. I had been studying to be uh, an engineer, and that's what I did. I became, in 1948, Matter of fact, I started, I graduated from high school in 42. Mm -hmm. I had three years of military service, and I graduated from college in 48, so that's only six years, including my military service, that I graduated as a civil engineer. And that's what I did all, I went to work for the Bureau of Reclamation, which is part of the federal government, that's what I did, until mm -hmm. I retired. Okay. Um. My wife will get it. All right. <laughs> Did you keep in touch, or maybe we should let it before we continue? All right. Uh, did you keep in touch with, uh, we talked about this. Um, did you keep in touch with any specific veterans after the war? You talked about being a part of that veterans organization. Uh, not really, not until I got into the Panther Veterans Organization mm -hmm. and started going every every two years. Yeah. And when did you join the Pan? I don't remember exactly, but uh, probably in the early 80s. Early 80s. So I've been to a lot of conventions. Mm -hmm. Reunions. Okay, okay. Um... So, all right, now we're getting to the final two questions. Okay, do you think that your wartime experiences affected you in a negative way, positive way, or did it not affect you all that much? Well, if I hadn't have been in the military in World War II, I would not have gone to the University of Missouri, and I would not have met my wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, therefore, that was the woman I married, and still am married to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so overall it was a pretty positive experience. No, I didn't like the military. I uh -huh. wanted to get out as soon as I yeah. could. Mm -hmm. And that was just... Because I didn't like people telling me when to get up and what to do. Mm -hmm. I, I, can just, I can figure out what to do for myself. I don't need you to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you learn any life lessons from military service? Any pearls of wisdom? Well, I, I would say, going in, I was much more idealistic. But I found that it didn't really make any difference what you knew. It made a difference on how old you were. I was felt in many cases I was working way below my capability mm -hmm. <laughs> because of my age. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. And then is there any specific stories that you'd want us to record or any specific instances you'd like to talk about? No, I think I've told you about them. I was married uh -huh. at Camp Rucker, Alabama, mm -hmm. and that was, not everybody does that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much. I, I have a, an album oh, you might like to look at. An album? But <laughs> oh, and now we have some follow-up questions from... Uh, what was the name of the general you were chauffeuring? General Rollins. He was an investment banker, and in he'd been in World War I as a lieutenant. And he went to Brown University, became an investment banker, and during World War II, they put him out in the 43rd Division, and they moved that out, moved him over. They were forming the 66th, and became the mm -hmm. artillery general for the 66th Division. Uh, could you be a little bit more uh, more specific about where you were stationed, if you remember? Well, okay. I'll, I'll start all over. My first station was uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. Mm -hmm. From there I went to Columbia, Missouri, University mm -hmm. of Missouri. From where I went to Camp Robinson, Arkansas with, in, with the division, which immediately was transferred to Camp Rucker, Alabama. So I spent some time there. Then I went from there to England, and from England to France, and from France to Germany. From Germany back to France, and from France 
back to Austria, Vienna, and I came home through the harp. Could you, uh, could you go back over what you said about those emblems, the patches? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, here, you can see the emblems here. These were the various patches that I wore during World War II. I was in five, well, this was different outfits. Uh, the Air Corps, Air Corps patch is that one. And I went from there to Army Specialized Training Program. And from there I went to the 66th Infantry Division. And at one time we were up in the 23rd Corps in Germany. And then I went to the United States Forces in Austria, Occupation Force. Uh, could you also talk uh, about the pamphlets, the uh, propaganda pamphlets that were... Yeah, the, <clears throat> these were dropped by air in the combat area that I was in in France to try to get the Germans, uh, to, we, they outnumbered us about three to one. But we had most of the high ground and so forth. And uh, they, they dropped these pamphlets to try to get them to surrender. They, they would be read, and mm -hmm. be a lot of them, and, and, they, and this was a safe conduit. Mm -hmm. they, they dropped these out of aircraft and trying to get people that were soldiers there that might surrender. Tell us a little bit more about this picture of Eisenhower. Yeah, General Eisenhower's brother was president of Kansas State University for a while, shortly after the war. And General Eisenhower came on the home homecoming day to visit his brother. And he was this was the stage of the parade, and he was standing there. So I took this picture and, uh, and enlarged it and, and made this. I created this picture. What's your personal opinion of? General Eisenhower? Well, it was very positive. I, I thought General Eisenhower was a, a good general. Uh, I didn't care so much for General Patton. General Patton was pretty ruthless, which is maybe fine, but, for, but it's not my style. <laughs> uh, general Patton had a lot of spit and polish even in the middle of combat. And uh, there was, in the Sergeant Stripes, there used to be stuff that was derogatory to him, which he did not like. But he got published in the paper. Do you have any questions that we'd like to, that you'd like us to ask you, Carla, at all? Or would you want to talk about, well, would you want to talk about, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm helping you guys out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, uh, would you want to talk about, um, when you said you drove from from Belgium to France, right? Yeah, in you, a jeep. In a jeep. Would well, you want to talk about your experience, of driving experience? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then that might make that that will make it so. Yeah. What um, did you do? What did you see? How pe how people live? Um, how were you guys received by the locals? Kind of stuff like that. Well, I might talk about my automobile accident. Well, there you go. If you had a, you had a. Back then, we were driving from here yeah. to here, and I had an idea. Yeah, you can talk about that. All right. It's already recording, so. Okay, so go ahead and. Okay. Okay. When I was driving to General, I was a brand new job. I had just started that day in uh, Germany, and we were going to Marseille. So I'm a brand new driver and a brand new car, a different car. It happened to be a Mercedes that we had captured from the Germans. And we normally left the bivouac area where they stayed overnight. And when the division moved, it moved in convoys. And uh, we would leave last to be sure everybody got out of there. And then our goal was to be first at the other end so that we were sure everything was ready for the troops when they arrived at the next big bivouac area. So we're, we're uh, traveling from Germany, going south to France, and we get into the eastern part of France, and a little girl ran out across the road in 
front of a jeep who I was following. And he jammed the brakes, and I jammed the brakes. But my brakes on the, on the civilian car weren't as good as his. So I ended up smashing a fender. Now, I'm driving for this guy I don't even know. <laughs> it's the first day, and I've smashed the fender. So he said, well, get out and fix it. So I did, and pulled the fender away from the tire, and we went on. So the, the general was very forgiving of me that day. <laughs> I, would, I wasn't sure how this was going to work. The same thing happened, and in, in this was later on down in France, I was pulled over by, everybody was an MP, it was after the war, they made MPs out of anybody. And I was driving 45 in a 20 mile an hour zone. However, it's a three lane highway. <laughs> and I happened to have four nurses that I picked up with me. And so this guy pulled me over for driving 45 in a 20 mile an hour zone. And um, took me down to the station and, and said, well, are they civilian? No, they're not civilians, they're army nurses. So he couldn't do anything about that. So all he could do was write me a ticket for doing 45 and 20 miles an hour zone. So I, again, I haven't worked, I've never had this happen before. So I go back up to where the general is now eating breakfast. And I say, I had a little problem this morning, sir. He said, what was it? I said, I got arrested for doing 45 and 20 miles. He said, where was it? I told him it was a three-lane highway. He said, well, if you don't do 45 down there, you get run over by the bicycles. What's wrong with those people? And anyway, he fixed my ticket. I did. 